Hi, in this video we're going to work with the Microsoft Unity framework that is for dependency injection. So in a previous section we've developed this hero video game where we created a version of a hero that can only handle a sword. And then we created a second version of the hero that could handle multiple weapons. And we passed those weapons in using parameters. So we said that the second version was more flexible than the first. However, we're going to make this one step further and we're going to show you how to use the dependency manager tool called Unity Framework. Now this is not the Unity to make 3D games. This is a Unity Framework that allows you to do dependency injection in C-sharp code. Say that fast. So I want to get to the uh, de dependencies that are in my project here. So let's go to the NuGet Package Manager. So once I'm in the NuGet Package Manager, I'm going to search or browse for the things that I've not installed. Let's search for Unity. And the first item that comes up is my choice. So I'm going to select this project and click Install. So now I'm going to import a new class called the Unity Container. That's what Unity gives us, is this thing called the container. And we'll make a new instance of the object. So I'll put a note here to tell you what it's supposed to do. So conceptually, what are we making this do? We want to use a container because it will keep track of a list of all of the items that can be used as parameters in our hero class. Now that's specific to this program. More generically, we would say a container contains a list of all dependencies in a program. All right, let's continue on. We're eventually going to create hero number five and give him a sword, but let's get those things going one step at a time. So what I'm going to do with this container now is I'm going to do something called register type. So register type means you're telling the container that if you are looking for an I weapon, for example, let's go to I weapon, let's see, there it is, that for this case, we are going to register a sword as an I weapon. So let's see, that tells the computer that all weapons now will be considered swords by default. So the next person I create will get a sword. Now we can come back here and swap this out to be grenades or guns. So the next item that I'm going to put in my container is the I hero. So we're going to say, what kind of hero are we expecting? And we're going to say that from here on in, the default hero is going to be the hero that can use any weapon. So this is also easily changed if you want to change your uh, uh, type of hero. Lastly, let's create a var variable for hero5. And he is going to come from the container and we are going to tell the container, resolve for me what an I hero is. And so it will go back and look at what I've already registered and say, I hero is going to be a hero that can take any kind of weapon. And he is going to be carrying a sword. So that's what resolve will give us. Now resolve, in, instead of using parentheses, uses the, the angle brackets. So let me fix that. And let's see if the error goes away. Okay, also I forgot the optional parentheses at the end, if there are any parameters. Okay, so this will almost work. Now the problem that will occur is that for each sword that I create, I have to tell it what the default name of the sword is, because that's part of the constructor of the sword. So I need to put in something in the parentheses. So inside the parentheses, I'm going to look for something called an injection constructor. And by default, it says, I want to give the attribute. I don't want the attribute. I just want injection constructor. And you can see that it's not recognized by um, Visual Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and choose import or using injection. Now, for the parameter in there, I can provide the name of the sword. So for my default sword that I'm going to provide, I'm going to say his name is Slasher. Now, for the hero himself, he has two parameters. So we're going to provide a new injection constructor here, and I'm going to say that his name is Sword Swinger, and he is going to be taking any kind of weapon. So expect a type of I weapon, and that's what we'll put in there. So the Hero 5 should be named Sword Swinger, and his sword should be named Slasher. 
So before we try to see if it works, let's put in a little print statement to see if we can make him attack. So I'm going to put in hero5 down here after his constructor and choose attack. And let's also put in a console right line so that way we get a space. Okay, let's see if this will work. So we have ourselves hero5. He's the first one to attack. It says sword swinger prepares to attack. Slasher slices through the air, devastating all en enemies. So say that fast. Okay, so we've got ourselves an example of three different ways to build a hero. We have the first one, which is Hero 5, using the full Unity insertion framework from uh, Microsoft. And then the other two that are below him are using the same idea of doing dependency injection through the constructor parameters. And uh, then the third one, of course, is the guy that can only use swords. So did three different ways to accomplish some various uh, couplings of how tightly these uh, classes work together. Now, I want to show how quickly it is to be able to swap out one type of class for another. So when the line for register types comes in iWeapon, I'm going to change it to a grenade. And my default grenade will be called Ball of Fire. And then when I go to my hero, I'm going to change his name to Bomber, just because it makes sense, but I could have left it whatever it was before. So with two changes like that, Hero 5 now has new properties, has new weapons. And so we can see if that works. And so you can see now the message is telling us that Hero 5 is now called Bomber. Bomber prepares to attack, and the ball of fire sizzles for a moment and explodes. So the point here is that the Unity framework allows you to do this right here, to register certain types of properties that you're going to be inserting into other classes, and almost at, like at runtime, where you can just change the, the one line, and uh, you, can, you can run different properties. Now, where do you use this in practical results? In testing, that's the first thing that comes to mind. So let's say you have a testing database and a production database. And you can just swap it out with one statement here to say, instead of uh, iWeapon, you might have something called iDatabase. And the name of the database would be called SQL Server, or MySQL, or something else. Production and test. And so with one statement changed, you can direct your whole um, environment to one place or the other. So you can have a test environment, and then you can have a production environment. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. Also, if any reason you wanted to change out a system, such as a credit card processing system, you could easily do that here with dependency injection using Unity. Now, Unity has other competitors, so you might want to look around to see what dependency injection systems are available for your particular language. So Java's got their own, and Android's got theirs, and here in C-sharp, we're using this one. So I'm going to show you another example of this using a uh, logger, using uh, different ways to swap in and swap out loggers using dependency injection, but that'll come in another video.